Football Podcast. Touchdown Ram! Recovered by the Chargers. Touchdown UCLA! With USC great and NFL stud, Frosty Rucker. The Trojans back in front. And LAFB founder, Ryan Zyrood. On the Believe Podcast Network and LAFBnetwork.com. This is your destination for Los Angeles football. What's up, Los Angeles? This is the LA Football Podcast, always on LA Football Network, LAFBnetwork.com, your destination for all of your favorite Los Angeles football teams. Also, always on the Believe Podcast Network. Thanks for tuning in. We appreciate you as always. Got a great show today. Frost has the night off. Don't worry, he is not going anywhere. As I've said all along, we have big things planned um, for this offseason, for the future. It's just been a a crazy couple of weeks for him. Um, But we roll on regardless, but he will be back uh, next week. we got some great guests lined up for you. But today's show, we are joined by the producers of a newest documentary podcast series called Bolted. Uh, I won't get into it too much because that's what the whole episode is. We talk about it. But for you Chargers fans out there, um, it's a great episode because this is not a documentary that you would expect. There's not a lot of... They, let me just say this. These two guys did this very well, getting perspectives from both sides of the aisle on how the Chargers left San Diego and came to Los Angeles. So it's a ton of history. They did over 48 interviews. It's extremely well done. Episode 1 and 2 are out right now. Episode 3 comes out uh, next week on Tuesday, and it's a six-part um, series. So it, so far, I've listened to the first two episodes. It's awesome. Um, both these guys are super cool. Uh, work in the film industry, journalism industry. So they do a really good job. So we we have this them on to talk about it. Um, so yeah, if you're a Chargers fan, this is a great episode. And uh, definitely check out Bolted, but we'll, uh, we'll get into it right now. Before we do, always got to mention our sponsor of the show, betonline.ag. You all know, no more football, but we got basketball. March Madness is a week away, I believe. Some crazy news with Duke and Kansas both out of the tournament because of a positive COVID test. So it's going to be an interesting, interesting tournament this time around. But hey, at least we have one. At least we have a tournament. So um, betonline.ag is the place to go for all of those bets. Baseball season is right around the corner too. Dodgers are the favorite, uh, I believe. Uh, So if you can put some money on to win the World Series, head to betonline.ag. If you go there today, if you have not signed up, you get a 50% Welcome bonus. Hopefully most of you that are listening are already on Bet Online because you've listened to the show for a long time and they've been a sponsor of the show for quite some time. But if not, head to betonline.ag today and sign up. Tell them the guys at the LA Football Network sent you. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this with uh, Rafi Cantor and Ben Stein, producers of the new documentary podcast series, Bolted. Hope you guys enjoy. Stay tuned after for a little uh, breakdown I give um, after the interview. All right, Los Angeles, what's up? Excited about these next two gentlemen that are joining me here on the LA Football Podcast. It's going to be a really good conversation. Um, They are the producers of a newest docu-series podcast called Bolted. You can find it everywhere podcasts are found. It's also on the Believe Network. But uh, excited to talk about it, just about the Chargers, their history in San Diego, the move to LA. We're going to get into all of it. So, uh, you know, I'll introduce you guys one by one so you can give a little bit of your background and kind of uh, what you do now on the side of this, and then we'll kind of get into the show. But first, uh, Rafi Counter, Rafi Cantor, excuse me. What's up, man? How you doing? Welcome, welcome to the show. I'm doing well, Ryan. Thanks so much for having us. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. And and Ben Stein, thank you as well for joining. Uh, welcome. How you doing? It, really good. Thank you for having us. This is really exciting. I'm I'm happy to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So let me uh, let's start with this before we get into it. So what are do you guys have? like a background in, in film and podcasting and audio and in media, like how did this kind of idea aside from perhaps Fanton, which we can get to also, but how did this idea of creating a a podcast docuseries, which is not as well known nowadays, obviously there's mini series on like Netflix on, on video side. Um, but how did this kind of idea divulge Raphael? I'll I'll start with you uh, about that. Yeah, so um, I was born and raised in San Diego. Uh, I moved to LA in 2013 to attend USC. Uh, so I'm a USC alum, and uh, I went to the film school there, and I studied screenwriting. Um, so that was my yeah. background. My background is it was a film background, a, a television background specifically in writing. And immediately out of school, I worked for AMC, the television network, uh, Walking Dead, Breaking Bad, all that. Um, and I was there for a year and a half, uh, working uh, in the development department. 
And eventually uh, there was a show that was uh, being created at AMC called The Terror Infamy. It was a mini series that uh, premiered in 2019. And uh, when it was in its early stages of development, I really liked the script and everything. I uh, asked to be if I could get introduced to the uh, creator, uh, who then became my boss. Uh, and I have since worked for for three years. We worked on that show for a year and a half, The Terror Infamy. And then uh, since then, he has started working at Netflix, which means I have started working at Netflix. Hmm. So my day job is uh, I work for uh, Al- his name's Alexander Wu. He's a writer producer. Uh, he wrote on True Blood Forever on HBO, if, if you're nice. familiar with that show. Yeah, I am. And uh, we're working now on a show with uh, the uh, creators of Game of Thrones, David Benioff and D.B. Weiss, um, that uh, Alex is also writing on. Uh, which is based on a Chinese sci-fi trilogy called uh, the the first book is called the Three Body Problem, um, and okay. that's uh, going to come out in, uh, in in a while. Uh, but it's <laughs> uh, it takes a long time. Turns out makes a long time to make television, but uh, yeah. it's uh, it's been a cool experience, and that's so that's that's like my day job. Yeah, that's awesome, Ben. Before I get to you, just curious, Rafi, how much has COVID changed the the industry in a sense? Are you more on the writing inside side, so you don't really necessarily are with the day to day, or do you see all that too? And it has really affected kind of what you're able to do. Well, I have a, uh, uh, so in terms of the actual day to day production stuff, I mean, it's immeasurably changed it. Um, yeah, and sure. you know, every production now has like a, uh, you know, there's, there used to just be like a first aid, like a nurse, uh, or someone, a medic, uh, that would be on set every day. Now, like every production has like a health and safety COVID compliance team. Um, cause obviously it's like a huge liability and stuff like that. And then speaking the, of the stuff that I'm more familiar with, which is writer's rooms, which I, you know, used to be in writer's room which in person, everyone's like eating in the same room and like, totally. uh, and, and, and now everything is over zoom. Everything is just completely virtual online. Uh, so, I mean, just basically every way in which you think it could have changed is pretty much exactly yeah. how it's changed. So like with the rest of the world, yeah, we're all on the, yeah. we're all on the same boat. So <laughs> I get that. So yeah, Ben, you're up. What, uh, how'd you get into this? What's your background? And uh, yeah, just talk to us a little bit. So um, also grew up in, and born and raised in San Diego. Um, so very, you know, Rafi and I grew up together. Um, and then I went to school up in San Jose for... Um, journalism. I studied journalism and mass communications and really was trying to start a career specifically in sports journalism. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I did internships and and jobs and different things uh, around the Bay and um, just really, the the main thing for me is that I fell in love with the story behind sports, you know, less so of, you know, you know, player A hits a home run and, and, you know, whatever scores a touchdown more of like the stories that um, are, are, are that make up the game. That's what I have always loved about sports. And um, so after graduation, tried to get a job in every network and every newsroom. And um, I said this last week to Rafi, but like, it's apparently hard to get a job in, in sports media. (laughs) People, people really like, uh, talking about sports. Yeah. And so, uh, a, a few friends and I started kind of just like dabbling in, in podcasting, um, shout out to all my shouting from the stands friends. Uh, we, we just kind of tried to learn the medium mm-hmm. and then Rafi reached out to me and said, Hey, I've got this idea. Um, you know, the chargers moving obviously meant a lot to us. And he said, but it's so much more than, you know, or that, that we talk about mm-hmm. and, from then it, we just ran with it. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was in the same boat. I, um, I wasn't even a journalism major. I was a recreation and leisure services major. Um, yeah, it's a real thing. The Van Wilder degree. Uh, but I just too wanted to work in sports and uh, yeah, Ben, like you said, it's so hard to get into. So I figured, okay, I'll just start my own thing and, you know, podcasting website. And I tell people all the time, it's this medium is great because anyone can do it but it sucks because anyone can do it. So there's like hundreds of thousands of people all doing it and you have to just find a way to differentiate yourself and separate yourself. And, uh, you know, I think you guys have, yeah, are onto something here with what you created. So I'm excited to get into it. Um, last thing before we get going though, did you guys see the, the opener for college football, USC and San Jose, uh, play each other this year? Yeah. I, I texted Ben <laughs> And I was like, mark your calendar. And he was like, why? <laughs> why would I Why would I make note of this? This is going to be a blowout. And I'm like, eh, it's, the, it's the experience, you know. Yeah. Uh, so for, for those listening, I am wearing a San Jose State shirt right now. Um, and I will, be, I will definitely be in tuned. And, and I'm sure Rafi and I will be talking back and forth 
if not potentially attending the game, we'll see where, where the world is at that point. But uh, uh, I was really hoping for like, it, with how weird this last season was that they would just throw out that San Jose state versus USC battle for California. Mm-hmm. Like I really wanted it. I, last chance, yeah. Right. I love my school. I, I, I worked with our athletic department um, my entire time there and I, I'm very close and have good friends in that community. So I really was rooting for them to do well. Um, and I hope that it continues and they have continued success. Coach Brent Brennan is an awesome person. Yeah. Uh, that being said, uh, USC is also a really good football school. <laughs> yeah. And getting better, <laughs> thankfully, finally, right. getting back right. to the way USC should be with this, this uh, season, how they went undefeated before the, you know, the championship game. And obviously this recruiting class is fantastic, but um, last sidebar, Raylan Goforth is a linebacker for USC. I worked with his mom, my first job out of college. And his older brother played quarterback for San Jose State. So, you know, all these circles intertwine somehow. Connections, so look at that. yeah. Yeah, and he had they another brother that went do. to UCLA. So, they, there's a crazy good football family. Um, but anyway, so, all right, let's talk. Uh, Rafi, I'll start with you. So, this, this Bolted, you obviously guys both talk about you're from San Diego. Um, so, your, your roots and fan had run deep with the Chargers, as do many down there. Um, so, just walk us through briefly just what this show is about. Because, obviously, I think some people maybe see – let's say this some people current charger fans see and we'll just say okay this is just a show it's just talking about the chargers leaving san diego and it's going to have a bunch of fans that are salty and yada 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 so just talk us through briefly just what this is and why you wanted to portray in this this instance yeah um i want to go back a little bit further uh to a couple years ago uh when i was shooting the terror uh infamy i was i'd moved up to vancouver canada um, and I had uh, uh, one of the guys on the show, we worked in the VFX department, his name's Ken Coca, and he uh, gave me this book uh, called Boomtown, which was written by Sam Anderson. Uh, and it's about the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder, specifically the season after they traded James Harden. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it, it mirrored it with the city, uh, the, the history of, this, of Oklahoma City. And it would did this like effortless weave and it drew all this parallels and it completely changed what I thought could be possible of, because it's not quite a sports book, but it's also not quite a history book. It's, mm-hmm. it's both of those things. And I was like, I want to do that. And simultaneously to that, I obsessively and probably to a point that's detrimental to my health, listen to podcasts. Like I, I don't, <laughs> I don't really listen to music. I just whenever <laughs> I am like by myself in my house or doing things or driving around or anything, I'm just listening to podcasts and you're keeping you know, the industry going. So I, I, I'm single-handedly. Yes. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, you know, obviously sports journalism is something that I've always found fascinating as, as, as someone who grew up playing sports and yada, yada, yada. I don't need to go into that. Uh, but, uh, there were a couple really, really, really great, uh, podcasts that came out, um, that kind of influenced what we were going for as well. As I was like thinking about the idea uh, the Sterling affairs on 30 for 30, talking about Donald Sterling mm-hmm. and, and his downfall with the Clippers, uh, was fantastic. Ramona Shelper did that. And then there was another podcast that the ringer put out called Sonic Boom, which was about the Sonics leaving Seattle mm-hmm. um, that Jordan Ritter Khan did there. And so it was the combination of those two where I was like, Oh, there's a, there's a, this isn't crazy that I'm thinking about doing this. Like there's, there are shows that are like this that have been done. Um, but only I, 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 you know, one of the things that I really, really believe from when I came from USC and studied there and people are always trying to break into the industry, which is very similar to, as you were talking about Ryan with podcasting, anyone can do it. It turns out. So you have to differentiate mm-hmm. yourself. And one of the most valuable lessons that I learned was make something that only you can make. And this was something where I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm the only one that's going to do this. And then I, I was like, I also need someone who's as crazy as me to say yes. And so then I called Ben and he was, and I was like, Hey, this is going to be a lot of work. And he was like, whose car are we taking? Which is (laughs) the line I say every time, but it's true. He's and, uh, and so I think in terms of getting into why we were making this show, um, I wanted to understand more what happened, but I, I, because I didn't feel like I had closure as a, as a fan, you know, I was like, cause I live in LA. I've lived in LA the last seven years. I was like, cool. My team's here. And I went to a game and I was like, something's wrong. Mm-hmm. <laughs> something's missing. And so it was wanting to understand that. And then realizing as I went back further, uh, being really lucky to understand that just like Oklahoma city or just like Seattle or just like any of these places, so much of what happens off the field ties into what happened on the field. 
And what happens on the field often is a catalyst for things that are bubbling up on the, uh, under the surface off the field. So, you know, one of, one of the things I love about the show is that this show doesn't start in 2015 or 2010 or 2001. It starts in 1850. That's, that's the first date that we talk about in the show, mm -hmm. because that's the date that San Diego and LA were both incorporated as cities. And pretty much from that point on, San Diego has somewhat lived in LA's shadow. And uh, because of that, the city has defined itself as being not LA. And everything that Ben and I, when we were growing up in San Diego, you're just taught to hate Los Angeles. <laughs> and the thing about that is that Los Angeles doesn't really care. You know, San Diego. They, it's a vacation spot to go for the it's, weekend. It's a great place. It's, it's, it's one of the things we talk about all the time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, people in L.A. love getting away to San Diego for the weekend. And people from San Diego just hate L.A.'s guts. And so that's what made this whole move. And I mean, it, Ryan, you were talking about people on Twitter and stuff like that to this day being so upset still. Oh, yeah. And a lot of that is because it's again, it's not just that the Chargers moved. It's that they moved to L.A and understanding why that that animosity is there and also how this could be allowed to happen because you know i think even for some people still but especially in 2017 when it was the chargers first season there was still like so much adjustment that was being had more than the rams ever had coming back to la more than the raiders even had going to las vegas which has never had a team before i think that there was this just this like weird uh uh you know, it, someone in our show says it, it was like an, an organ that the body was rejecting at first. And mm -hmm. it slowly started to change a little bit. Um, but we want to just kind of understand and dig deeper on all of that. So, yeah. Yeah. No, I, it's it's something that, yeah, it's still um, the animosity you mentioned that, that comes from, you know, ex-fans or fans that are still kind of flirting with, do they do they follow? And it's, it's funny because you have this dynamic of, charger fans today that are saying hey i'm a fan of the team i don't care where they are plus they're only an hour and a half away it's not like they moved across the country like it's in reality where i live in north la it takes me just as long to get where they played in carson as it would from san diego to carson like if you go just by that but then there's the aspect of they they, they hate for la like you mentioned it's just like going to la and, and to be fair la is kind of hated probably by 95 percent of the country so not just san diego i think there's a lot of rest of the part of the country that hates la but so that's just the the interesting dynamic and the unwoven storytelling um, that you guys uh, you know, dug up. And I think it's, it's fascinating what will what, be fun to watch as the series continues to come out. So, yeah. And, and if I could just hop in really quickly, yeah. I think that's a place where a lot of people who we've talked to, who listen to the show, who aren't from San Diego or LA, it's a relationship that for instance, like Milwaukee has with Chicago yeah. or Philadelphia has with New York, where it's this city. That's a city. Don't get me wrong. Like those are great cities but they live in the orbit of this other larger city around it. And oftentimes you have the people from that city having very strong opinions about the bigger city and the bigger city, just not really acknowledging the smaller one. Yeah. So. Like I've honestly thought, and, and this obviously wouldn't happen and didn't happen. And I could be way off base here because they were, people were gonna be mad regardless if they move. But I really think if the chargers would have moved to like say and play at Angels Stadium and they became like the Anaheim Chargers or the Orange County Chargers. For some reason, the hate might have fallen off sooner because it wasn't LA, it was Orange County, even though it's still a move, still close. But or, or even if they were the ones that went to Vegas, which I think still makes the most sense to this day, and the Raiders yeah. were to come back to LA, I, I don't, I honestly don't know that people in San Diego would still be upset. So I don't know. I actually, and, and this might get a little off topic, but I, I always thought that if they would have gone to Vegas, the fan it wouldn't have just been a we are upset but like i don't think fans would have like they would have been upset that they left san diego but i think i would have still cared about the team i would i think a lot of my friends and family would have still cared about the team maybe not as much but a, a whole bunch and yeah. now it's just there's so many people that don't yeah well it's been to that point i have i have friends here in la they grew up charger fans the team moved here to la i don't know Ray, if you're one of them but they still hate the Chargers, even though they're now in their city, just because of them moving. To, I don't know. So, but yeah, to your point, if they moved to Vegas, that may have not happened. But <laughs> um, so, Ben, you guys obviously spent hours and hours interviewing people to get all this information. And I'm sure doing a ton of research. I, I don't know if you know off the top of my head, but off the top of your head, how many how many people did you interview for this? Do you, do you know for sure? Sure. Uh, totally. Um, we we talked to 48 different people. Wow. Um athletes play you know players executives journalists uh educators historians just 
really rich, great politicians really got the full circle. Um, 48 um, different people. Wow. So I think there's a people listening to this show now and or just listening later, but I know a lot of people that this is like a dream. This is one for me too. Like I was telling, I think Rafe before you jumped on, but I want to one day do like a docu-series on the LA football network because there's so many great stories and it's a fun way to do it, whether it's film or audio. But some people might think, well, how do I like 48 people? I don't have influence. Like I'm, I'm a nobody. How can I get? So what, what did you guys do to be able to get in contact with these people? Was it just relentless emailing Twitter, Instagram? How did you get in touch with these people? Um, did you want to go for it, Rafi? No, Ben, you can go first. I'll fill in anything. Sure. So um, I can feel that completely because uh, one of the first, the, the very first conversation Rafi and I had was, you know, let's do, you know, if we do this, it's cool. It's a really cool story, but like, I don't know that anybody's going to want to talk to us about it. Mm-hmm. And like, it'd be really cool. And, and I said, it would be really cool if we could get one or two players to talk to us. And, you know, 48 people later, um, you know, joke was on me, but uh, it was an, an email and it wasn't just a, Hey, I'm doing this podcast. If you're interested in talking about the chargers, we, we really talked about the, the different ways to make it so that people knew we were, already understanding that it was a, a very complex story and that um, we, while we know that there's complexities to it, we didn't know the, you know, we didn't know exactly the full details. And, and so we just needed to get those from the people that were there. Um, and it worked, uh, you mm-hmm. know, the first handful of people that we reached out to all were like, not only have I not been able to talk about the chargers in, in a long time and would love to talk about the chargers, but there's, this is a complex story that I would love to give whatever I can. And, you know, one person led to two people and then we were able to kind of branch off from there. And, you know, that kind of gave us some steam. Yeah. A lot of this, uh, so much of the show actually was us winging it for a lot of it. <laughs> like we were, we That's were life. really just sending it and we were just like, okay, like you, a lot of it is just like being willing to, to throw yourself out there, which at first was really hard. Uh, and then like Ben said, uh, after a few weeks, we, we got a lot of yeses from folks that like we knew in San Diego who didn't know us, but like mm-hmm. we're like, you know, like on the radio in San Diego or whatever. And we're like, yeah, I'll talk to you for 30 minutes or 40 minutes. And and they were kind of willing to say yes. And then from there, we were like we would send out requests and we'd be like, we talked to these people who, you know, and then we kind of built from there and built from there. And we were always kind of looking at it from the very beginning as let's start from the ground and then build and build and build and build mm-hmm. and build until, you know, eventually we're talking to like. Jim Steig, who was the COO of the Chargers for six years and before that worked for the NFL for 25 years and made the Super Bowl the way that it is. And then, you know, we talked to Ryan Leaf and we talked to, uh, you know, several players that you, you might remember, Ben Lieber, Roman Oban, uh, Joe Barksdale more recently, Chris mm-hmm. Harrison. Uh, and uh, and then we, uh, we talked to the mayor of Inglewood. We talked to the mayor of Carson. We talked to two San Diego City Council members. We talked to uh, Kevin Acey, a long time, you know, Chargers beat reporter, Daniel Popper, who's the athletic beat reporter. Mm-hmm. And Scott Kaplan yet on there. Scott Kaplan, yeah. Uh, and so it was just like, we just kind of built and we were always under the impression of everyone has a perspective to give That's that sure. <laughs> is going to have a, a, a kernel of something that is going to, you know, we can put in the show or that we can, you know, use to change our minds. And like, even our perspectives on this whole thing changed over the course of the 15 months that it took to put this together. So yeah, I mean, uh, the, the, really the, the, the short answer is just trust the process, but, uh, the the long answer is just, you know, hang on. Yeah. Well, and it starts with, that's what I tell people too, with what I've been doing also. And then just in life in general, it starts with, you need that one person and then do a hell of a good job and if you do, a lot of times that one person will tell someone else, Hey, I was just on, or they'll even tell you, Hey, that was a lot of fun. Like I have another guy that would love to jump on with you. Like we've done interviews with players before. And, and he was like, man, that was a lot of fun. Like, I'm sure my teammate would like to do this or this coach or that. And then they tell them, and that's way easier than you having to reach out. So exactly. I'm sure you had that happen a few times. I would assume getting up to, you know, 48, um, without telling me too much, or you can tell me as much as you want, but if you don't want to, if you want to keep it more mysterious, but you said your perspective changed throughout doing this. So do you, was that from like, I don't know, negative to positive from anger to understanding from what, what do you mean by that perspective change? Yeah. Um, so, I mean, part of the reason why we wanted to do the show in the first place was just understanding why this happened. Like, and I'm a lot more understanding of why this happened, having made this show. Um, 
I'm maybe a little less sympathetic about the whole thing. And uh, I don't know. I don't mean that in a cynical way. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I think I just mean uh, in the sense that, yeah, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, this was a business decision and everyone knew it was a business decision. But I think it's hard to uh, face the reality of people spend their lives loving and embracing these things. And it, and for it, the cold, hard truth to be, it's a business decision made by billionaires that is completely mm-hmm. out of the hands of the people who, you know, live and breathe this stuff. It's kind of, it, it takes the air out of the bag a little bit sometimes. But um, I, I think another thing that a uh, major perspective shift for us was uh, the Chargers future in LA. Um, you know, I think that when we came into this, this was, again, this was in the middle of the 2019 season. They're still playing in StubHub, which was not like a great thing for anyone. The team didn't like it. The fans didn't like it. It was just, it was all a bad situation. And so going into it, we were kind of like a pretty glass half empty about the Chargers future in LA. Mm-hmm. Um, Understand. And I think, yeah. And I think once we learn more, uh, not only about the NFL's business model and how the team actually makes its money and the stability that that provides, um, but also watching them play in the death star that is SoFi stadium, like, and seeing that like, oh, they're here and they're here for a very good bargain. And the idea that they're going to walk away from that, uh, it, it made me more optimistic about the team's prospects in Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, before I jump in, Ben, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Yeah. I mean, I would just piggyback that um, at least initially, uh, you know, 2015 through 2017, I would say, I, I really thought that the reason the Chargers went to LA was because they were going to get Dean Spanos or the family, uh, the, the Spanos family was going to get a lot of money um, and then sell the team. And then who knew what, knew what would happen. And obviously that hasn't happened. That didn't happen. And, and it doesn't look like that's going to happen. And, and that is something that I would say, just following what, everything what Rafi said is, is that I've learned that the, the, not just that the Chargers look like they're here to stay because um, they do um, and, and all of the optics are great for them, but that there's so much that they're doing for the community differently than that they did in, in San Diego. That makes me like, under, like Rafi said, understand everything a little bit better. Um, one thing that we talk about and had a few different people tell us is that is talking about the Chargers social team and like how uh, how really funny the the memes Best that they NFL. post are right and and that um, you know Keenan Allen and Derwin James are playing Madden and 2K and, and Call of Duty with people and and they have everybody in the community and um, one of the things that we talk about in our show is that the Chargers realized at, at, you know once they came to LA that just being the chargers and trying to win LA and trying to be the best team might not be the way to get fans. They might, they, it's going to be really hard to convert fans who are already charger or who are already fans of other teams to mm-hmm. become chargers fans. If you've rooted for the Vikings for 20 years, you know, it's, you're not just going to become a chargers fan overnight, mm-hmm. but they're going after people who are playing, you know, like, like kids and, and teenagers who are playing video games and, and might be interested in Austin Eckler because he plays uh, on Twitch with them instead of, you know, because he sees something on the field. And so um, it was just a perspective I didn't, never expected to ha- uh, understand at this point. Yeah. Yeah. I've said, you know, since they moved here, I said, this is going to be a long-term play. Like there's, there's a lot of people that the optics didn't look good for the first few years. And, you know, this is getting a little off topic of your guys' show, but, but the optics didn't look good and they didn't. Um, but, I said this was not a two to three to four to even five year plan. This was a 10 year plan where, yes, they're building their fan base from the ground up, meaning from elementary school kids. Cause yeah, you're not, LA had no teams for 20 years. So I, I came here, I was a Broncos fan. I'm, I lived in a house with five people in college. We had a Broncos fan, a Niners fan, a Raiders fan, uh, a Seahawks fan, and a one other one, all five of us, different teams. And we all lived here in LA now. So that was just, that was what the LA fan base was. And so we were not going to convert over. But kids in elementary school, they had no fan other than maybe what their their dad or mom watched. So that was going to be their target base. And I think they started doing that. And even just the little things like their little uniform release and they had their their side logo is like the emoji that with the bull ties. And it seems so simple, but little things like that are like genius things where when Justin Herbert wins rookie of the year, they have that on the Ferris wheel over the Santa Monica Pier. Like those are small things. It's like, okay, that's a huge logistical marketing victory 
for a team that really hasn't been in that spotlight really ever. And like I said, I didn't have any ties to the team when they're in San Diego. I just can speak of what they are here now in LA, but I think they're slowly building that momentum. And again, I'm ranting, but that to me, there was talks last off season about quarterbacks. Should they go after Cam Newton? Should they go after Tom Brady? And I was always in the said, no, they need to draft someone that's going to be here long-term, not a, not a two-year band-aid that when they retire, those fans that join because of Tom Brady are now going to be, okay, well, I don't care about the team. I was here because of Tom Brady. Draft Justin Herbert, and all of a sudden, takes the world by storm. No one knew he's going to be rookie of the year, but you have someone that's a long-term build. These kids grow up buying jerseys, grow up being a fan, and that's how you kind of establish yourself. So, Yeah, and, and by the way, it's not to- off topic at all. We talk about a lot of this in our last episode, which is oh, kind of like the, 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 the LA era is all covered in, in episode six. Um, and just building off of the Justin Herbert stuff, um, that strategy of, uh, going after, you know, younger fans with social media and all that stuff that is paying dividend. That's something that they did in 2018 after they tried, came to LA in 2017, tried to do what they did in San Diego, in LA Mm -hmm. failed miserably and wore it on the chin for that. And then came back to the table in 2018 and we're like, we need to change. And they did all the social media stuff. They hired a new marketing team. They, they, they again, started looking to changing their uniform, doing all this stuff. And then one of the things that we know about the younger generation now, like Gen Z that's coming up is that they are more loyal typically to players than they are to teams. Yeah. They are obsess- so popular. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And so with Herbert, not only do they have a star player, but they have kind of their golden goose in the sense that he is this young player who who younger fans can glom onto. And also he's an LA charger. He never played for the team in San Diego. He doesn't have that association and he can be their kind of new poster boy for the new era. So you, you, you're just talking about it, but the value of Herbert is so much more than just being a great quarterback. Oh yeah. Huge. Yeah. And you know, obviously what he did on the field helps too. So, um, and yeah, so I think they did something cool with that. So let me let me put you guys both in the spot here. I don't know how you want to how to answer this, but with forty eight interviews, let's do one difference. So I'll ask you first, uh, Rafi, and a little bit of Ben. Who was the most, I guess, entertaining or fun? Because you know, there's always those inter- interviews like you get off and you're like, that was a hell of a lot of fun. Who was that one interview you're like, damn, that was a great time? Ben's gonna be mad at me because I, I know that he's gonna agree with me that this is <laughs> it. Uh, we talked to Joe Barksdale, uh, mm-hmm. the, uh, offensive tackle. Uh, a few weeks ago and he was not only so funny he, he's a stand-up comedian now and he's really funny really he, okay he lives in austin he plays music he does stand-up and all that stuff uh so go check him out follow him on social media i think he's at jb dale 72 uh but uh so, so not only like being funny and all that stuff he was just really real with us. You know, yeah. I, I, I know he made uh, headlines in 2018 talking about his, uh, you know, struggles with uh, mental health and uh, depression and everything. And was, was really brave to talk about all that stuff. And, you know, he just like didn't hold back. And I think a lot of people when, especially when you're like, like you know, you re- record interviews with people, you put them in front of a microphone. I think sometimes they like maybe like tense up or get a little bit nervous. Yeah, Joe, not, yeah. not for a second. He was oh, just great. ready to go. So that that's my answer. That's great. So Rafi is right. I, I am mad because that's, <laughs> it, we've that's had this, com- well, we, yeah, we've had this conversation and, um, so Joe was actually one of our most recent interviews. He was probably like 43 or 42, something mm-hmm. in that era area. And um, he, exactly what Rafi said, just the energy was there to start. And it was, it was just, it was really fun. He didn't always give us like the answer we wanted to hear necessarily, mm-hmm. but he gave us the right, you know, he gave us the answer that, uh, from his perspective. So that yeah. was really cool. My, so, but I'll give you a different answer still. Thank you. <laughs> um, I'll go all the way back to the very beginning. Our very first interview was John Gennaro, um, who Rafi mentioned earlier. And before that interview was an idea that maybe this is something that people will talk to us about. And afterwards, we walked out just knowing people wanted to talk about this. So so I'd mentioned that um, that people had said they hadn't been able to talk about the Chargers for, for a few years. And, and that was actually specifically something that, that John had mentioned to us. Like, he, he kind of just gave us everything that he, he had observed and been a part of for however, you know, 20 years or however long he was working on different projects with the chart or about the chargers and, and being a fan as well. And it was, it was a moment for me that was like, okay, we're not just doing this, but it's like really something. 
and people want to talk to us about it. Mm -hmm. Um, that, and he's just a really high energy, uh, you know, that, um, everything that he, that he mentioned was really just like powerful too. Just to, just to fill in a little bit on, uh, uh, for what Ben was saying. So, so, uh, and I want to give a special shout out to John because, uh, so going back to what you were t- saying to people who might want to do this, who might want to make a docuseries mm-hmm. podcast and everything, this would be my advice to them. Um, John Gennaro was, uh, uh, was on the radio in San Diego. Uh, and the way that I know him was he, or he does have a, currently have a, a, a podcast about the San Diego Padres that I love that is called Padres hot tub. Mm-hmm. And I just knew him from that, but, but I knew in his previous life, uh, he worked as the, uh, managing editor of bolts from the blue, which is the SB nation site for the chargers. Mm-hmm. And I knew he cared about the team a lot and obviously was very smart. And I knew, I knew I liked his voice cause I heard it so much in my head. And so like, we just shot him a Twitter DM and we're like, Hey, would you want to talk about this for a little bit? And he was our very first one. That was January. I want to say like January 6th or January 7th of 2020. So 14 months ago at this point. And, and you know, he led to the next interview and the next one after that and the next one after that. So just go going off of like, yeah, exactly. Just, you just like who to set the tone with Mm -hmm. trust your gut, all that stuff. But John was really cool to, to come and talk to us the first time. And here we are. Yeah. That's awesome. There's nothing like having a, a great interview. And when you're done, you're like, damn, that was, that was just, that's why I do this. That's so much fun. Okay. So piggybacking off of that, don't give me names. We don't want to call anyone out, but you, we can talk, you know, subjectively if we will, but don't give me names who is like, I don't want to say cringeworthy, but just a struggle to get out of. Cause I'll give you while you think about it. And again, you don't have to give me names. We're not calling anyone out. I know, but I, when I, uh, the XFL, when the XFL came here just last year before COVID shut it down, uh, I was given full access with the LA football network. It was awesome. Awesome league. I was t- so bummed. I'm glad it's going to be back hopefully in 2022. Although I'm hearing now there's some snags, but, but anyway, the first week of training camp, I was able to get the head coach on Winston Moss. Awesome guy. Awesome coach, but he's intimidating as hell. I don't know if you know who he is or if you've ever met him. Um, he used to be the linebacker coach, for the green Bay Packers. And then he became the head coach and GM for the, the wildcats here in LA. So I was, I was real nervous, but I was stoked. I'm like, when was the last, next time you have a GM and a head coach as like a guest when you're first starting a podcast, I think I had like 10 questions lined up. I was planning 15 minutes for the interview. It lasted about a minute and a half because every answer was one word. <laughs> and I was like, okay. So it was like the most awkward interview ever. I wrapped it up. I was like, I don't even know if I want to like publish that or run it. I ended up just like talking about it, not actually running it. So that being said, was there anyone you guys have where you were like, Ooh, that was, that was a little bit of a struggle. We talked to a politician who, uh, you know, one of the things I think that we were worried about, and I will say for the vast majority of our interviews, uh, this wasn't the case. But what one of the things we were worried about is that we would go and talk to people about the Chargers and they would just go on. They would have their prepared soapbox statement mm-hmm. of this is how I feel. This is why I'm right. This is why my perspective. And especially because a lot of the people we're talking to were actually involved in the whole thing that like, you know, they and, so, you know, especially with politicians, you know, they, they're playing to certain ears or whatever. Mm-hmm. And we talked to someone uh, who it was just so clear that they were doing that, that they were like, they were still giving their stump speech from 2015 when the Chargers were still in town. And this was five years later and the Chargers had been long gone. And uh, I will say very little of that is in the show. (laughs) So, so, uh, you know, because like, if we can tell we're going to do that, it's not contributing to our story because you can go and get that on Twitter if you want to do that. And our mantra from the beginning was, you know, do something that's fair and also do something that's original and not something that you can find on Twitter. Totally. Love it. I don't know, Ben, if you're thinking the same guy, you had someone else or if you don't have anyone, that's fine. I mean, I, I, w- I want to um, double down on what Rafi said that this was not something that happened with most of our, I mean, we really did have, and, and I don't want to just say that because it's our, our, us who did the interviews and it's our podcast, but like, that usually is the case too, not to cut you right. off. I feel like 90%, 95% right. of the interviews I do are always great, but there's every, every now and right. then. Okay. And when you do, you <laughs> know, when next. you do 50, there's going to be the, the one or two that aren't. Yeah. And, um, I, I wouldn't say, I, I know which interview Rafi is talking about. I wouldn't say there was too many like that. There was definitely times where, um, you would get to a point where somebody really didn't want to talk about that specific area of the, of the Chargers career or, mm-hmm. um, you know, didn't feel like they wanted to be the voice for that. And it would get kind of awkward and like give, like you were saying, one word answers or like really short answers. Um, but I feel like everybody that we talked to at least gave us a little bit of like something I never knew. 
Um, yeah. Like there wasn't one interview that we did where uh, I didn't know, or I already knew everything. Mm -hmm. So um, I would say that while there was definitely some like trickier times in interviews, for the most part, they were, it was, it was a really cool experience. Yeah. That's awesome, man. So well, let's, uh, we'll, we'll get this wrapped up here in a minute. So if you guys, uh, after doing this, I know you just wrapped it up. Episode one and two are live right now. You're releasing episode three next week. Uh, but have you already started thinking about maybe doing a, another one of these down the line or is that you're just trying to enjoy and relish this and, uh, and go from here? Um, well, what I will say is Ben and I were literally on the phone two hours ago because we're still working on our last episode. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, you know, it's like, you're, you know, it never, it never finishes until it's done until, mm -hmm. you know, uh, there's a great quote about, uh, Saturday night live, uh, where the people that were making Saturday night live, where they say the show's not ready because it's ready. The show's ready because it's 1130. <laughs> and like, I'm kind of feeling like that a little bit now with episode six, because we've, we have so many things we want to say and it's, it's so hard to finish something. And we're trying to figure out what that last statement is. And I think we landed on it today. Uh, I sure hope we did. Uh, but uh, uh, in terms of the next thing, I think we're really just trying to get through this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're trying to finish this now. Uh, it's definitely something I would love to do again. I had a lot of fun doing this. Um, and I learned a lot of lessons that I will, I, if I ever did this again, I could like definitely carry through to the next thing, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I would just um, say that also really just focused on um, getting, you know, doing the best with bolted as, as we can, because um, it, it doesn't matter what's next if as long as bolted is is the best that it can be um that all being said it's like i said earlier this is the the career path that i'm on and um i am hoping that that it's not just bolted and and that i there is another story or or something that's next so i guess we'll just have to wait and see what uh what comes about Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and by the way, before we wrap up, we're very open and kicking around the can of, you know, we don't know who's going to hear this podcast. We've, we've been really blown away with the response so far in just the few days that it's been out. And, you know, there's a chance that this interview leads to someone wanting to talk that we didn't get to talk to from the show. And mm -hmm. we would absolutely do throw a bonus episode of just like a one on one interview of someone um, so that, you know, if that ever happens, uh, you know, I have to obligatory shout out, follow us at Bolted Podcast. Uh, on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff. If we ever put up bonus content, that is where you will find it. Yeah, don't worry. I was going to let you uh, shout those out before before we got off, so I wouldn't forget about you. But uh, was there ever was there ever thought before you started to do this as like a video documentary? Was it always audio podcast format? Was kind of the thought process? Never a doubt in my mind that this would be a podcast. Perfect. Um, and that's because. I obsessively listen to podcasts mm -hmm. and I just, there's, there's a certain amount of um, production capability and stuff that you need uh, to do video stuff. It also okay. makes it a lot more complicated from a logistics and rights perspective and everything like that. Uh, and uh, I think for us, uh, podcasting just made the most sense and it's the form that I felt the most comfortable with personally. I, I completely agree. Um, yeah. Video is super cool. And um, a whole other beast. Um, Right, exactly. It's a, it's a whole different beast. And um, similar to Rafi, podcasting is something that I'm like genuinely interested in from the medium uh, aspect, but and, and um, storytelling aspect, not just because this story seemed like it would make a good podcast, but that I am enjoying or that I enjoy doing podcasts. So uh, when Rafi had like asked me if I wanted to do this podcast, I didn't even like think like, you know, this was, this was a cool idea for a podcast, but what if this was a TV show? Like mm -hmm. we, I, it was a podcast and like everything we've done about it has just been and, creating and, a really And the relationship podcast. that you have, and, and Ryan, I know you know this, but you have a great podcast that the relationship you have with the listener is so much more intimate with podcasts mm -hmm. than you have with any other medium just because you're in their ears when they're walking around doing their chores or going, walking to work or driving or whatever. And I think for a show like this where you're getting into kind of more sentimental stuff, just listening to people talk, I think uh, it just, it, it hits a little bit harder. Absolutely. No, I would agree with that. And, and the beauty of the way you did it is if the response, which I know it will be, if it is so big and huge a year or two from now and nine, you can now turn it into a video documentary using kind of what you've done and, and then just adding to any, it. So. Any producers want to call me? I'm available. I'm around. Yeah. So we <laughs> had, a, we had just a few weeks ago, um, 
he he uh, directed the um, We Are the Saints. We Are the Brooklyn Saints, a documentary on Netflix. Uh, his last name is Valdez. Awesome guy. Uh, so hey, maybe we'll put you guys in touch. And you never know. You're both at Netflix. I don't know if you've crossed paths ever, but I know it's I haven't huge, yet. I mean, it's huge been, company. It's been so COVID. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, all right, guys. Well, last thing. I know, Rafi, you mentioned it kind of in the beginning when I just asked you the, the basic, but if we were to take a soundbite, which we're going to, so here's your, your heads up, a soundbite for LA Charger fans, why would you tell them to listen to this show? Um, because I think, well, first of all, if you're an LA Chargers fan, your relationship with this team is continuing forward. Like you are invested in this team. And there are things to know about this franchise and about the Spanos family in particular, who obviously have been associated with the team for so long that I think would be valuable as a fan to know. Mm -hmm. Um, There are things that can be gleaned from their time in San Diego and their personnel choices and their, uh, you know, goings on off the field that I think will inform them in the new era. Now, I think that when, uh, Dean Spanos is is eventually more out of the picture and John and A.G. Spanos, who's, who already have day, day-to-day control of the team. Mm-hmm. Um, but when they become kind of the face of the ownership group, some of that might change. And they also might grow and learn in the same way that uh, I think that the team grew and learned when uh, they came up here and they hired the new social media team and everything like that. Um, but I think it's going to be a process. Um, we, we have an anecdote from episode two where, uh, you know, Bobby Beathard, the longtime general manager of the uh, Washington football team, and then moved to uh, won Super Bowls there and then moved to San Diego. He was trying to quit because Alex Spanos, the patriarch of the family, didn't want to give him money. Um, and it was actually Dean Spanos, who's similar to John and AG now, uh, you know, had day to day control of the team at the time, but was not the principal owner, mm-hmm. was the one who convinced Alex to give uh, Bobby Beathard the money so that Bobby Beathard would stay in San Diego and remains the team. Lo and behold, that very season is the season that they go to their only Super Bowl. Um, and I think it was a lesson that that Dean learned early. And I think that John and AG have the potential to learn the lessons that they learned when they, you know, moved mm-hmm. the team to Los Angeles. Uh, and so I think if I'm an LA Charger fan now, there are lessons to be learned so that you have the the past context because I'm a huge believer that the past is prologue for all of this. That the past, if you're an LA Chargers fan, the past 57, 58 years of this franchise is prologue to everything that you're experiencing now. And you will get all of that from the show. Love it. Ben, anything to add? Yeah. I, I mean, I think the number one reason really is just it's it's so much history uh, behind this team that um, plays a role into everyday areas. Um, and if you really want to care about the chargers, um, then uh, I think it's so, it's so crucial to listen because there's going to be so much you won't know unless you do. Uh, it's just, it's, there's so much that the Spanos family um, and what they've done um, in, in the past is, is the same things that they've tried to do in, in LA. And as we talked about, there's different things that are happening, but there might be times where the team gets really frustrating because as a fan of the team for, you know, 20 years, you saw things happen every week or, or every year and it, it didn't really make sense. And I think after doing this podcast, I've learned why a lot of those littler things were happening um, and they kind of build up to make the bigger picture. Um, so I, I really think that any LA Charger fan that wants to listen and get a bigger picture understanding of the Chargers, now's your chance. Yeah, and you, you always learn with everything in life so much from history and and uh, the past. So uh, Bolted Podcast, guys, make sure to check it out. It's uh, episode one and two out now, episode three coming out next Tuesday, and then simultaneously four, five, six every Tuesday following. Um, uh, you mentioned already, Rafi, but where can everyone find you guys on socials, find the show? Yeah, at Bolted Podcast, B O L T E D. Uh, we're that, but that's our handle on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, we've got bonus content coming out every day on there, uh, you know, videos, images, all that stuff. Um, so uh, give us a follow, uh, shout us out. But Ryan, thanks so much. This is, this is a truly awesome conversation. So I just really appreciate you giving us the time, and we love what you do with the show. No, I appreciate that. I thank you guys for taking the time. So, and thanks for doing great work. Uh, I can't wait for uh, the next episode to come out and uh, we'll keep pushing that for you guys. And uh, uh, looking forward to see, see the history and story. Cause I'm a huge history guy too. And uh, you know, I love 
storytelling. That's why I love LA football because of the history that a lot of a lot of people don't know, like with the Rams being here and the Chargers actually started in LA, like you guys talk about in your first season, and they got the name the Chargers because of the horns being blown at Dodger games. Like there's so much cool, cool history that you guys obviously talked about, and that's a way to get into it um, in the show. So bolted podcast, guys, make sure to check that out. Um, to both of you, Rafi, Ben, truly appreciate you for coming on with me and, uh, you know, stay healthy, stay safe, and we'll definitely uh, touch base soon. All right. Thanks, man. Thank you. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview. Um, like I've been saying, and like you probably saw from that, this, this bolted documentary podcast, you definitely got to check out. Uh, they do an awesome job. It's super well done. Like I said, parts one and two out now, part three comes out next Tuesday and then an episode every Tuesday after that, there's six Total episodes, but yeah, it's great. Um, if you're a Chargers fan, just the history uh, behind the organization, you learn about ownership, you get perspectives from both sides, so it's definitely not a, a show just bashing the Chargers move, um, which we can appreciate because we're Chargers fans, and we get tired of you know salty ex-Charger fans, and this doesn't do that. It just gives you the perspective of both sides and what actually went into the move, not just you know one side slandering the other. So um, definitely we're checking out Bolted Podcast. You can find it. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, we actually are also going to have it on LAFBnetwork.com. So you can just head to LAFBnetwork.com, click the tab Bolted Podcast under LAFB Podcast, and you can find it there. So um, we'll make it super easy for you to find and check out every week. Before we wrap this show up, got to give a brief moment to talk about our newest sponsor, eBay. Whether rare, dead stock, or the latest release, find the exact shoe you're looking for. So if you're sneakerheads, eBay is your place. It's the original sneaker marketplace and the place to go to cop the pair you've been eyeing. With eBay's authenticity guarantee, your sneakers are meticulously inspected by independent professional authenticators. A team of experienced sneaker authenticators verify the box, logo, stitching, and dozens of other inspection points. And it also protects sellers with verified return process. So for sneaker sellers out there, eBay has eliminated selling fees on sneakers $100 and up, making it free to sell or flip your collection. So go to ebay.com slash sneakers. Once again, that's ebay.com slash sneakers. The world's best destination for discovering great value and unique selection. All right. Thanks again for tuning in. This is the LA Football Podcast. You can find us everywhere you listen to podcasts, Apple Pod. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Stitcher, TuneIn, Google Play, anywhere you listen, we are. Just search LA Football Podcast or Believe in LA Football. We are also on YouTube now. Make sure to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel. We're trying to grow that platform as we are new at the video side. But we're making it happen at LAFB Network is all you got to search to find there. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all at LAFB Network. Thanks again, guys. I'm Ryan Dyrod Frosty. We'll be back with me next week. Got some great shows coming. So make sure to stay tuned with us as we roll into free agency. Starting the legal tampering period on Monday. Should be a lot of things happening for your Rams and Chargers. And we also have some UCLA and USC news coming with the draft just around the corner. Enjoy the weekend, guys. We'll talk next week.